Okay, Prakal, today I'll be talking to Laura about the term ceremonial grade. And this is to start up a conversation series which we'll be holding over the next few weeks. So today we're just going to give an introduction and uh, highlight the next few topics coming up. Um, let's just get her on board here. Hello, everybody joining. Hello, hello. <laughs> We tried this a little earlier, it didn't work, so welcome back, those of you who are here. And then with Laura, if you're there, struggling to come on, maybe just um, send a request to join, sometimes that works. Mm. Oh, there she is. Hello, let me just get you out of the flowers. <laughs> ah. Welcome, welcome. Hello, friends. Hello. Hello, dearest. So, Laura um, is definitely not new to our followers here. If you've been with us for some years already, um, she's done a few lives. We've had a few chats, but for any of our new followers, um, this is Laura. Please go follow her if you don't already. I'm lighting a candle here just to bring in the spirit of the conversation. And I've got some beautiful flowers as well, just to set us up in the right space. Um, so, I was just sharing already that um, we are highlighting a few topics in the sessions, generally introducing what we're going to be speaking about, the term ceremonial grade, um, and this is in the spirit of raising awareness and educating others, just sharing what we know and so that we can continue to work with integrity. Um, so that's pretty much the introduction I've given, and then I'll yes. hand it over to you to see if you have any kind of definition you would like to work with or any other way of starting up the conversation. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting and for starting this. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I just want to honor our d um, different countries and lands that we're in. Like we're talking across the globe, right, from South Africa to Glastonbury in the UK, where I am. And I've got my flowers here on there and the candle as well. And it's quite a oh, tryst, grey. <laughs> British afternoon, let's say. <laughs> but yeah, I, I want to highlight this because um, it's just a beautiful representation that we get to connect over cacao from such different countries. And so for everyone that joins, like wherever you are in the world, welcome. And it's such a pleasure to be able to connect and to educate ourselves, raise awareness, and also just enjoy. Yeah. yeah. And which I I have already started doing without you, so <laughs> cheers <laughs> to this beautiful medicine that's connecting us. Um, so I thought we could probably both um, be helpful for others to hear what we classify for ourselves, ceremonial grade cacao, and actually just to highlight right off the bat that there is currently no global association that monitors anything around uh, the grading of uh, in, the, in the artisanal space and in the, the sacred space that we work in. So this term ceremonial grade that is thrown around quite loosely more and more and we're hoping just to um, share some insights on that. So Laura, do you want to start and maybe just give your um, your take on that? Yes, thank you. So first of all, I want to explain just for the basic um, kind of idea of that, that construct we're talking about and ceremonial great cacao so it's very um interesting that came up recently and maybe friend and we can can talk a bit about it about it but anyway it's a, a topic that has been on my mind for years now like since starting to drink cacao with that attention of doing inner work and we uh, with the attention and intention to go really deep and also to honor the medicine um and it's now becoming more and more, let's say, a public conversation or an, a more important conversation with cacao being more mainstream and that being like really pure cacao, not just chocolate, not just cocoa. So we will make a bit of a distinction between that as well for those that are new that are like, well, I'm just having some cacao that I got in the supermarket because everyone on Instagram drinks it now. So we mm. want to make sure that cacao is not just cacao. There's a difference, and when I think uh, when we think about grading, you can, for example, think I like to use this example of maple syrup. So we all love maple syrup, right? Well, we know it on Canada, very uh, common sweetener, and you've got different grades of maple syrup. So when you go to um, the cheapest shop, you get in the UK, for example, I've 
I've seen maple syrups that are actually just sugar syrup mm -hmm. with maple aroma mm -hmm. flavoring. So it's not even the mm -hmm. real thing, but it still says maple syrup. So that's a really, that's, I'm not even sure if that is a really great, <laughs> so it's just a, just a fake Hello. product in a way. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then you've got um, pure maple syrups and you've got grade A, grade B, grade C. So you've got the dark ones and the lighter ones, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of, you know, just for you to understand, to everyone that's here, there's just mm -hmm. different variation of a product from whole food, um, from different processes, sources, etc., to um, mm -hmm. a processed food or even changed food, mm -hmm. right? So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. And ceremonial grade cacao, I also want to honor that we're talking about, as I said before, a construct mm -hmm. that comes from our Western mindset. Mm -hmm. As the indigenous tribes and cultures, and there's many, of the lands of cacao, like we know nowadays most popular is the Mayan in Guatemala and Mexico. However, there's many across like South America, Mesoamerica. And, and they don't work with the term ceremonial cacao or not even cacao ceremonies. That's something that's quite recent in the last 20 years that came up through Keith Wilson, who ended up in Guatemala, got called by the spirit of cacao and well, was looking or term right so just also saying this that this is kind of like our idea of ceremonial great is not necessarily what indigenous yeah. would would call yeah yeah and that, thank you for bringing that up because it's this is the context that we are setting now the context we're providing um as the platform for the conversations going forwards and as much as possible we'll try to keep within that frame because it can get quite a it's kind of controversial or quite a heated um topic and um, just to also bring in while we're just defining things and what we are discussing, it's very much from our knowledge how we have been called to work with cacao. And it's not that it's the only way. So we are going to just highlight how we feel it is necessary for us in a sacred way with cacao that also has other, um, not even subtle nuances, very direct impact. For example, social impact we're going to go into and uh, being responsible as a consumer at the end of the day because our, our choices, what we buy and what we consume definitely has an impact. And nowadays, you know, we can't ignore this or just uh, um, be ignorant to it. There's, there's enough out there for us to educate ourselves with on the internet and to find practitioners that we, that we resonate with, that are working within their integrity. So it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because it is the context that we are working within. Um, even the, the term cacao ceremony is, is not an indigenous way. Um, working in ceremony is, working with cacao is, but the combination of maybe how we would structure something and have cacao as a, the main focus and a highlight in the ceremony is is, is now, has nowadays come in because it's needed. So cacao is always adapted, and that's what's so beautiful about it. And she doesn't say, this is the only way to work with me. Um, there are many ways, but when it comes to the grading of cacao, and we're going to go into this in our other talks, we feel it's, imp it's important to highlight that there is a distinction because of the direct impact on the land and on the people, um, which ultimately is then in, uh, influencing the product that we're getting. So there is the cycle that we already are part of. Um, Laura, I'd like to hear your your thoughts on on this kind of, kind of overall umbrella if you like of what we are trying to talk about here so something i was thinking about earlier was to highlight what it is ceremonial grade is and we can go into detail and i'd like to pose this to you and, and hear your thoughts on it so ceremonial grade at the moment is a, a label that we put on for integrity quality and responsibility. We're going to break those down in the next few chats, but I want to know if you know, you feel on those three terms: integrity, quality, and responsibility. Do you have anything to add to that? Reciprocity. Reciprocity. And yeah. um, harmony. So harmony. I, I, this is so great, friend. I love that you bring these um, terms mm -hmm. into the conversation because all of them are subjective, yes. as is the, the term ceremonial grade. And all of them are also like there's there's no right or wrong way. Cacao has been used in sacred ways for millennia, mm -hmm. like thousands of years, um, and not in just one one way. So we, as our, as Westerners that are consuming cacao now, we are we are finding our way 
and mm. some of us like us too for example we really aim and we feel strongly about integrity right that's something that friend and me i think agree on a lot and 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 so this is something that that is important to us so that's going to be important for everyone so we have to make responsible choices that fit our value system mm -hmm. and live by them accordingly so that's um and and also then raise awareness for those that don't know yet and be the bridge for this right mm -hmm. so um i um yeah so we are working in this context of us westerners trying to work with cacao in order in that ceremonial great context in order not to repeat history mm. especially chocolate mm. history as it was before so we come from and we also need to acknowledge where we come from we come from years of of slavery that started with mm. you know the colonizers the spaniards came into the mess american countries that then um came into exploitation it came into um processing of cacao because to the western tongue it didn't taste good they didn't really understand so it was changed a lot it didn't honor the real core plant mm -hmm. nor the spirit of it mm -hmm. um and then yeah slavery child labor which is still an issue at, at, at parts in africa unfortunately um cacao being grown in not native countries um plus um now now nowadays we have capitalism and also there's exploitation mm. and unfortunately that term is not protected yes. so we enter the realm of well everyone can just use it yeah yeah and it's it's, it's not that people that are using it are doing it with bad intent it's just the they don't know. I found that a lot of these conversations that are coming up nowadays, there are people jumping on board, maybe even listening to this conversation going, well, I don't actually know. I'm, I've been selling ceremonial cacao or I've been using it for my ceremonies or I've been told to use it by someone who's a facilitator, practitioner, um, and I just get it from them and I just trust that source. And that's not, unfortunately, that's not enough nowadays. And it's not our fault. We're bombarded with information all the time and we would like to trust. So, Laura, you did a lovely, um, lovely bit of awareness um, recently around discernment, and it does take effort. Yes, but that's that that's the responsibility piece. We need to take responsibility for our our actions and educate ourselves. And so that's that's the the spirit behind this conversation and this conversation series. Is here we are providing you with what we know and what we feel to be true, and of course it's subjective. Um, and if you don't agree with us, well, listen to somebody else, listen to a few other people, and then do some research behind them and um, make a decision for yourself based on a little bit more information than just one person saying, this is ceremonial great, okay, cool, I like them, I'm going to trust them. Or this reputable brand, that's another thing we're going to go into, you know, the credibility behind a label or a term. Which can be sold, right? We know that. Yes. Like, think about Oakley. Um, you know, that like started out as a tiny Scandinavian brand, I think, right? The oat milk and water, and then it got sold, you know, because obviously oh. they were like, oh, it's getting too big, don't want that anymore. They were a small business, and then it's now they can do whatever with it because it has got a good reputation. Mm. That's mm. consumer discernment needed. And so you said, here we are, that's bringing us from where we came from, like the chocolate history that we don't want to repeat, mm. to um, where we are now in this context of our kind of holistic wellness world where. Um, we also have to acknowledge that in our society, we want the quick fixes, mm -hmm. right? We, we, we feel like, all right, we're not happy with our life. Mindfulness is just starting, you know, but yoga is also used as gymnastics. So it's a really, we don't have the time, basically. We're also busy. We don't have the time. Society keeps us in the hamster wheel. So we need quick fixes, all right? We do maybe a quick meditation in the morning and then we feel like, okay, check that. I've done my spiritual thing for the day. <laughs> and, and now I'm more productive and can go on. And, mm -hmm. and that's where we are kind of are now. And of course that then comes in with um, people, especially businesses, institutions, taking um, advantages of us as the consumer, knowing our pain points, knowing that we are, we've been numbed out, we don't want to face our emotions or can't, um, we're not in a good place necessarily um, because we're so in our heads and of course we want to go into our hearts. So we know now rationally we want that and we're finding ways, but we're still such at the beginning. Like we, we have to really now allow for slow integration and for day by 
day reflection and, 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 and also reconnection to our innate nature and to, to the nature around us and how that changed and how we can now move on from that. And so um, when businesses now use that term ceremonial great, they are selling you the whole idea, mm. right? They're selling us mm. the solution, which it just can't, can never really be. The solution is us. Yep. So that's where we are now. And there we come into, all right, I have the responsibility. I need to discern, discern and that's mm -hmm. why we're here. We are also mm -hmm. here to raise awareness, to educate in our, our mm -hmm. um, what, what we can, mm -hmm. right? In our, our context mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And uh, that's what we do. So here yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are, exactly. And it's, you know, I'm sure we both can go into our whole story, both of us, of, of how we got to a point of recognizing something as ceremonial grade and, and wanting men to honor that and uh, protect it. Um, and may I say something, right, friend? Here, yes. this is this how we how we went, how we came to this place. This is very. That's what I meant to say. So, in this quick fix world, we are, we we solve the solution and we we just take something, thinking it's good for us. How, who else, you know, it has been there that to strengthen the celery juices or the smoothies or mm. the spirulina that really doesn't taste good, but we're like, oh, it's going to help us. It's going to help us. But we mm. we just drink it and then move on. We're not really making mm. space to feel into ourselves yes. that it is really good for us or not. Like all mm. the plex seeds, all the chia seeds, mm. you know, everything. Mm. And cacao is kind of that same thing. Mm. So where we've, we are still, friend and me, taking the time and, and, and dedicate to mm. cacao because it's our, our main big passion in life and main work at mm. the moment, where we really sit with it and feel like, is this truly yeah. for us? Is this working with us? Is this cacao working with us? So for those that don't have the time or the passion to do it, make sure you have someone that you trust, yeah. right? That you listen to, educate, or be recommended cacao from. Because yeah. otherwise you end up just taking it because you think, think it's good. But yeah. is it really for you? Yeah. That's another responsibility you have to take. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, spot on, spot on. And that, that responsibility piece is an interesting one, which is why we're going to dedicate a whole um, chat session to that. But there, it does go both ways. You know, the responsibility of whoever is selling the cacao or offering the service of a ceremony or a space to be held, but also the consumer, just to have that little bit of discernment, not just to trust anything that comes across your, uh, your feed or uh, if you're in the supermarket. And even that, you know, we're going to go into why cannot be in a supermarket if it's ceremonial grade cacao. Um, so a few interesting points we're going to dive into. Perhaps now is a good time to actually introduce the, the topics and the general categories we're going to be talking about. Um, I did have to write them down just so that I didn't forget and could kind of like succinctly go through it. So um, we're going to start our next our next chat session is going to be talking about sacred reciprocity because that's that does distinguish the rest of the use of cacao, which there's nothing wrong with. I use cacao for baking and I use it to, you know, just uh, uh, different ways, but it's, I'm not in the sacred space with cacao then. So we're gonna be talking about the sacred reciprocity and this is not just with working with the medicine ourselves at home, but how is it with nature that the people who are tending to the land work with it? So the sacred reciprocity is in all the, the, the links in the chain, but definitely from the source. Um, so it's that harmony that Laura was talking about earlier, the red harmony, reciprocity. And this goes through the entire cycle from the land where cacao is grown, how the people are living there, not just working with cacao, but living day in, day out, right the way to us who are working with cacao in service and offering it to others, maybe even selling it, whatever it is, and then teaching and educating others how to work with it themselves, that it is in the sacred way, and giving back to nature. And so that cycle continues. So that's quite a big topic. We might need a little bit more than our 20 minutes for that one. Um, we were then going to look at farming practices because there's a lot to discuss just on that. And we're hoping to get a guest, a guest in with us. Um, and this is going to cover a bunch of topics under farming. Um, and then another topic linked into that is kind of the next natural part of getting cacao to us would be the processing. So we're just calling it the processing of the beans, but it's basically all those small little steps involved, um, drying the beans, fermenting the beans, peeling them, um, how, how we actually get our paste. And in all, of those, in all of those steps, things can change, whether it's going to still remain cacao in a sacred ceremonial way, or if it's just going to go to the big commercial chocolate industry. 
So that's quite a big topic as well, the processing of beans. And then we're going to have an entire session um, on social impacts and responsibility, which we've started to touch on already. Social impact being us as consumers, what is the direct impact then to the farming communities? Um, and so if the consumer starts to dictate the market rather than <laughs> the capitalist kind of big companies dictating the price point to the farmers, then hopefully the farming practices can become a bit more organic and um, people can start to live in a, in a better way rather than being forced into a corner. And that also goes with um, us as a, you know, having that responsibility, taking responsibility, and this discernment Laura was talking about as well. And just starting to ask questions. And if anything comes from these, these talk series we're going to be doing, it's for you to just have a few questions now that you can actually go and ask your supplier or practitioner. Um, just ask. And if they can't answer you, you'll get a feeling, right? You're like, hmm, this is a little shady here. Or, okay, they do know what they're talking about, and, I, and I'll trust them. They're credible. Do you want anything you want to add to that, Laura? No, I think it's uh, beautifully summed up. Yes, exactly. It's all about just educating. Mm -hmm. And for this is my, my big piece in my work, whether it be with cacao or mythology, my teachings of Avalon, it's all about sovereignty. It comes down mm -hmm. to sovereignty, and it's just a big, big piece of in this life. And also, of course, with cacao, because cacao reminds us of our, of, of our um, strength and our sovereignty mm -hmm. within, right? So, and that comes with taking responsibility. Sovereign means you have um, the decision making, you rule over your life, you make decisions, you have to trust in yourself. And um, we are at different stages, every, every one of us, right? So it's also about honoring that, where you are, and doing what we can. Um, one of the four agreements is do, do your best, isn't it? <laughs> so something to yeah. back to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so with this whole conversation that is now, you know, getting bigger, I think it's a beautiful chance for us all to educate ourselves and, and research more. And not just cacao. I feel it's car it, carries, yeah. it carries further, much further sure. in all areas sure. of our life. Yeah, absolutely. But like you said, this just happens to be our passion. This is our purpose. We feel so called by the Spirit and we're still in there kind of being a voice for her in our own way. So this is what we're going to dedicate our energy to. But definitely the, the, the spin-off, if you like, is, is that we just have this awareness in general of, of so much more because we're taking the time to find that inner sovereign and listen to that inner sovereign rather than just following somebody else saying this is the way. Uh, that's not necessarily going to be our way. Yes. Um, and coming back to what you said, no right or wrong. Right? Yes. There's, no, there's your way. Mm -hmm. And there's our way. We love to present you our way, what we think, what we've been, we've come to conclusions, what we've researched, what we continue to like question as well. Right? Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing journey. And um, mm -hmm. to, to help you to find what's, mm -hmm. what's right for you. Yeah. So that's pretty much the beautiful summary. And I just want to add on to that. This is not going to be to. We're not going to be focusing on shaming anyone or any brands or any ways of doing things. This is just going to be to provide information and hopefully educate some people that aren't already up to the, the latest uh, kind of ways of working with cacao, what's actually happening out there. For example, Laura mentioned a little, just like a very beautiful, but like very big, uh, small little snapshot of the history of cacao and how there is still slave trade associated to cacao in certain areas of the world. Um, and that might be a whole bunch of information that you didn't know. So we're not necessarily going to focus too much on that, but at least now your, your, your eyes are open to you know, the actual reality working with cacao. And then take what information works for you from what we are sharing and use your discretion around it, ask some questions as you go. Um, and just to say you know, that we're also living here on this journey. So please let us know if there's any other topics you would like us to cover, like detailed things, ask questions you know, at the end of these talks. When they save those videos, put some comments in there. So put some questions in there, and then we'll, we'll address more if we need to. Um, Absolutely. If there's a the question link. now as well, type it in. Like if you want to know something, um, please. Yeah, exactly. Feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. Always give a bit of time for some questions. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to say on that note. So oh yeah, it's it's basically an invitation. This is an invitation for all of us to step in and um, through our conversation learn. But then ask the questions and we can go research if we don't know or address if we have another time. And um, let's start these conversations. And hopefully this just also inspires others to do the same in their, in their communities, in their ways. And it doesn't only have to do with cacao, but just that we do have a voice. 
And the way we, you know, that's what cacao is teaching all of us, it's the way we show up to life. And the way we do that, Laura and I, working with cacao is from the heart. But it's also from the space of, of, of having something to share and knowing that it, 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 there are ears there that want to hear it. So we're not just going to like, you know, it's easy to just like stay in the shadows and not sh not step into the light and say, we have something to say, because there might be a, you know, a kickback of, oh, I don't agree with that. So this is just our way of stepping in and doing the work and being the voice of spirit um, for what we know at this current time in our lives. Beautiful friend. So may I add two things here, the love piece and um, the stepping away. So of course we also, when we arrive at ceremonial grace, so we just, that's our main topic, right? Ceremonial great cacao. Can we even define it? Because, you know, it's something, yeah, it's a construct, but we talk about, there's something we can come back to and that's the essence of ceremony and ceremonial which is sacred, which is a spiritual connection to spirit, right? We, we call it, if we, if we open a ceremony, we come into a aim to come to presence and connection with spirit. Mm -hmm. So, and now we look at spiritual traditions and philosophies all over the world, all over the globe. Um, what does it boil down to? It boils down mm -hmm. to coming to the heart, mm -hmm. right? Connection, living out of love instead of fear, mm -hmm. like, oh, um, coming into sovereignty, into finding your way, um, um, remembering <laughs> what we know in innate wisdom and nature. So this is something like across the board. And so when you are then coming in that, in those different stages, we, 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 we evolve in as well. And sometimes we are at a stage where we just know, wow, everyone their own, right? This is something that is also underlying our discussion. Um, but it can sometimes make us feel a bit like, yeah, I'm just not going to, I'm just mm. not going to step forward. I'm not going to say anything because everything is fine. But then still there is polarity in this world and there is mm. injustice. And some people are called forward to stand up for this. Others are like, no, I'm tending to my home and that's also good. Mm -hmm. So there's just also different phase and stages where we're at mm. and what we have energy for. Mm. And, um, and then, um, so it boils down to this whole piece of, of love and, and compassion, connection that I find overarching in ceremony. That's why we perform ceremony mainly, right? We celebrate, so that's also joy. It's also something in the heart. We celebrate life. Mm -hmm. So when we come from a standpoint to stand up for, speak about ceremonial cacao in terms of uh, life, celebrating life, being in joy, being of the heart, mm -hmm. I always come back to the question, am I acting out of fear or out of, out of love? Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tackle that conversation like this too. Like, mm -hmm. am I, so when we talk about the farming, the processing, the reciprocity piece, mm -hmm. is it, is it, what would love do? Um, love would, yes. is not greedy, right? Love mm -hmm. is not l telling a marketing mm -hmm. lie. Love is an integrity. Mm -hmm. Love wants everyone to thrive. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. sort of thing, I think is like an mm -hmm. underlying thing here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because this can, this, this, this conversation, as we've seen, it's been very heated this past few weeks because of a certain situation, which we're going to now, but um, this heated conversation is, I've been watching and observing it, and I've noticed for myself, you know, my own um, triggers that have come up, and it's so easy to slip into ego, fear, and comparison, and my way is better, and needing to, like, just um, react rather than just resting, pausing for a moment, being like, what's, what is bringing it up for me to also look at my own stuff? And then to rest back into love. Rest back into love and go, okay, what would love do? That's what the plant is teaching. That's what the spirit is teaching us. And so we have all these wonderful opportunities nowadays bringing up these discussions of, okay, ceremonial grade. Some people are using it and it definitely isn't ceremonial grade. All right. Let's talk about that. And let's notice when we triggered ourselves. So this, I love this work because there's always opportunity yes. to go a bit deeper. To go a bit deeper. I literally mm. sat there crying yesterday after another conversation. I've had conversations about this topic with so many different people, mm. different backgrounds these week, last weeks. And yesterday, it really got me a point of, of crying about what am I distracting myself with my activism in it, so to say, mm -hmm. from like, what is my action? Mm -hmm. So it's also this, like, am I, yeah. whenever we're finding ourselves in this energy of fighting, mm -hmm. are we fighting against or are mm -hmm. we fighting for something? And mm -hmm. also, is there something underlying that we want to look at in yes. us instead of seeking it yeah. external? But it's a fine line between then 
bypassing our responsibility. Mm. We had like a comment of it, um, you know, no judgment, but when it comes to slavery, yeah, exactly, there's real yeah. injustice in this world. So it's a fine line between taking a step back, tending to our own emotional inner landscape and like our our issues and not running away from them, but also not completely removing ourselves from the world and like bypassing our responsibility that we have. And friend and me are really passionate about coming for and educating because this is something we feel we can do. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and we are also doing the work, like we sit there crying and we face our inner world, right? We really do. And I, I ask mm -hmm. everyone that works with cacao, literally everyone that works with cacao I see, no matter how, how far on their journey they are, they, they say something about heart opening, right? Is the thing. And yeah, so when you're there, ask yourself what that means to you. I always mm. pose the question, can you yeah. open your heart when your heart is breaking? Mm. Like, it, mm. heart opening is all, it's, can tend to be thrown around as this light and love term, mm. but it's also a very strong, yeah. strong yeah. topic. Yeah, yeah. And you know, to add to that, because this can bring up a lot of the triggers around, um, owning right so Love i've trigger. done it with this morning for so long <laughs> trigger 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 so can you open your heart in the moment of the heart breaking or the moment of the anger arising or the moment because most of the time if you are able to that unnecessary amount of anger fear um comparison jealousy whatever it is that unnecessary amount will just dissipate because we just we rooted in love and i talk about you know, heart-based living and it is it's, it's a practice every day this is this is not just like a spiritual bypass working with cacao. It can be for some, but for me, it's really about showing up to life and showing up from the heart. And like Laura said, to know when to fight the fights, you know, because we could very easily just go, oh, it's a lot easier not to. I'll just sit back and not have a voice around this. But to then go, you know, this is actually feeling like it needs me to show up and do something, to take action, to be that, to, to, to be an activist in a sense. So, mm. Mm -hmm. Lots of lessons for us along the way as well as we go through this talk series, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Um, it, it's it's really it's really that, isn't it? Like just um like we are all for we are all for the message of cow and the the joy and you know like I said the whole like my my spiritual home with the Celtic mythology and Aldon it's all about the sovereignty goddess and it's it's it really comes into into. The, the fine line between following your joy, do what you love, at the same mm -hmm. time also like stand up for, for yourself, take responsibility, face the uncomfortable. We know also heart opening to kick out. We know it brings up our fears, why we are not in joy. If we, every time I have someone in ceremony intending to bring more joy in their life, usually they are the ones crying and actually are allowed to release something that held them of the grief, you know, that that block the joy yeah. so we we, we want to work with both sides and i think that's where cacao is such a beautiful 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 um plant mm -hmm. ally for our world yeah and which is why we are going to hopefully remember at the end of all of our talks to so just come back to that yeah. you know no matter if someone's listening to this and they're still working with cocoa powder and they, they think that that's like the cacao that we're talking about, ceremonial grade. And then they go, oh, no, I haven't been working with that. Oh, no, I'm such a bad person now. Um, no, no, no. It's okay. We're learning as we go. And um, <laughs> No, no, you will say, no, no, no. You're in for a wild ride. Get excited. <laughs> yes, you're in for a wild <laughs> ride. Get excited. And, and listen to every single one of our talk series because then you'll talk to new series because then it'll layer on quite nicely and you'll get to the part of the the processing of the beans and you'll realize oh okay that's why it's not ceremonial grade okay um, and listen to yourself like really sit with cacao like with the cacao we have and then try others and really yes. notice the difference yes and um well, you know, laura laura and i both are we, we're quite um uh, what's the word um loyal to the brands that, that we work with cacao but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to speak for you, Laura, so I'm interested to hear. Yeah, I still Laura, haven't Laura. tried yours, actually. I thought this this morning. I was like, I really need to try for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love, I love different you, brands, though, by the way. Yeah, not, yeah. so that, that's, what I was just, that's what I was going to say. It's like, I still find it's important for me to stay open-minded, to not get too fixated on, like, this is just the way I know, or in working with cacao. 
holding ceremony and also working with the cacao himself, the physical paste, the ceremonial paste. And so from time to time I do, I'm like, let me just play devil's advocate with myself. Let me go buy something that I know is not ceremonial grade. So I think already there that probably doesn't work that well for my experiment <laughs> because I already know it's ceremonial grade, grade. But let me be open to this is a beautiful medicine. Oh, the one day actually I was gifted some cacao. I had no idea where it was from. I was gifted it. They said it was for ceremony. So there we go. I had no preconceived idea yet. And uh, I just thought, thought this is, I'm going to honor this cacao. And it didn't taste as nice as what I'm, I'm used to. But it didn't matter. It was a gift from someone. And the, the, the spirit of the gift actually made it so beautiful. It was something very different to what I'm used to. But it is good for us to go and just like keep going outside of our boxes of what we know is comfortable, what we know is right as well. Um, yeah. And that's the spirit, so also very strong, strong, isn't it? Also, mm. what we tell ourselves, yeah. But it's, it's obviously when we know our source, and we just there's also this whole piece which we talk about in the next talks, like how it's source that gives me a good feeling drinking a certain cacao, right? So also yes. knowing, mm. well, I'm 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 doing something good here as well by consuming yeah. this. Um, but also, um, yeah, different. We are different people. Like this is why I love that we come together, friend. Like it's not like mm. we're advocating one brand and trying to do it our way. We're like, no, no, no. We there are various beautiful sources out there yeah. for different um, reasons for different uses like i've tried cacao that i just simply can't sit with um sit still because it's so activating but that doesn't make it worse cacao than the one i'm drinking it's just not for what i like to use my cacao for versus um others love to be active and you know yeah. the ecstatic dance scene for example and um there's also then biologically just we are yes. we, we, totally we have a completely different um system like okay. depending on where we live what we eat yeah. genetically yeah. um what we're used to so also that is there's mm. different receptors so to say yeah cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah spot on beautifully summed up actually it's beautiful um so that thing on the source i did see a comment come through earlier um, for example, if I also fully don't agree in supporting slavery, so it is important that we educate ourselves, uh, if it's, even if it's just for that, um, because that is still very much a reality today. So if I'm going to be gifted some cacao by somebody and they say it's from this place and I just know that it's supporting slave trade, then I'm not going to be able to energize or cleanse myself so much that I'm going to take the purity of the cacao in and the negativity of the slave trade. No, that cacao has a certain energy to it. And it's not supporting a cycle that I want to be supporting. So this is a very individual decision. You know, when we come to integrity, it's it's very individual because it's based on values of a certain uh, culture, and you could even say within that culture, certain societies, and within that, even different, you know, certain families. So Laura and I, I think also it's amazing. Like we have the a similar set of ethics and values that we are holding ourselves in integrity to. Yet we don't. Even, we've never even met in person. <laughs> But again, the, the, the proof is in the pudding, you know, cacao crosses boundaries, she brings us together because if we can be in the heart, the heart knows no boundaries. The heart speaks love and acceptance and wants to share with sisters and brothers across the world and through love, not through slavery, for example. So there's a whole cycle there that we're going to go into. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, I've just seen some, another, another comment here. So uh, someone just said that you know, we have three types of cacao sitting in the house, and depending on the energy they want to choose that. Yeah, I relate to that. I've got, mm. I, I have a cupboard with a few as well. This is, mm. yeah, it's so nice. And I also like, like what you said, friend. And there's also I bake with cacao, and that's a different cacao, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and every now and then I have to go somewhere and somebody's got a slab of, I'm not going to mention the brand name, so I'm not going to shame, but one that I know supports fifth trade. I'm like, oh, okay, but it's such a well-known one. It's supposed to be a quality chocolate. And they got, because you know, they knew I was coming, they got the like 70% dark chocolate. So that's like supposed to be much better. And um, I, I do, I enjoy it. Not enjoy it. I do enjoy it when I'm there with those people. Because again, it's, it's the spirit of gifting and, and those, those people didn't know. They were just ignorant. But I'm not going to go and be like, you know, kind of piss on their parade kind of thing and go like, oh, well, this isn't and ruin the party. I'm not going to do that. But like, well, thank you so much for considering me and getting the 70% dark chocolate. That's amazing. I'll just enjoy a little bit and, um, and then come back home and go, I'm so grateful that I've got to take my proper ceremonial cook out home. And I can make my own chocolates from that as well and also also a, a different, um, not a grading that's ceremonial, but get a really good source of organic cacao. 
to then use uh, for chocolates and whatnot. And what so we're going to go into that. So I digress. I think our time is probably coming to a close. Are there any final shares or thoughts from your side? Um, so maybe yeah. Let's. How about we give like a little bit of a, like a little assignment or a reflection thought at the end of our calls for our lovely listeners okay. to just take away with. So I guess where mm. we today just talked about ceremonial gray, just a little bit um, in differentiation of cocoa powder or just um, a commercial cacao in the supermarkets. We're talking about a cacao specifically sourced. How we will talk in the next ways but sourced for ceremony so we're coming back to ceremony connection to spirit connection to mm -hmm. nature connection to our mm -hmm. heart so um here's mm -hmm. the the invitation to ask yourself why are you drinking cacao for i think that is one thing and then look at your cacao really research that's the next topic maybe like research ask your supplier um mm -hmm. where's the cacao from where's it sourced how is it being grossed? And with that curiosity, you know, not with that passive energy of like, tell me where it's wrong. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to judge you. Yeah. It's also like, oh, okay. Because also you've mm. consumed it. So you, you bought it. So it's yeah. also, you know, just like allowing that to just then go further. Like, oh, I want to know more. And ask yourself, is it in alignment with what you want yes. to receive from Vicar? Beautiful. Is that a nice assignment, Beautiful. So in summary, one word here, intention, intentionality. There's an intention with which we come to drinking cacao. What is that for you? And then, if, surely, if we're wanting to have the, the, the most benefit from that and still have a place in the world, that there can be this reciprocity. If that's your reasoning, then even more reason for you to intentionally source. So, ask some questions. Um, and I love that, Laura, because what we're going to be doing in the next uh, few talks is in each of these little subcategories of ceremonial cacao, there will be specific questions that we'll give to you. So under farming practice for, practices, for example, you can then actually ask your supplier like three questions. And if they're able to answer them, great. If they can't, then maybe like maybe a jump ship. <laughs> or maybe you can educate them as well. You know, again, this is all just like the chain of education. So intention, why are you drinking it? And um, start to maybe to do a little bit of research. So this is empowering. I find this process very empowering. I think that's also something to highlight. Like you're saying about, you know, the sovereign, sovereignty. Sovereignty, but a new word. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. I'm done. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> and yeah, Thank you so much. Ask Maria. any questions in the comments and we'll get yeah. back to them in the right way. And we'll get back to you. Awesome. So see you next week for our next, uh, we're going to be talking about sacred reciprocity and harmonious living with Mother Nature. Beautiful. So that's our next topic. Alrighty. See you all next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.